We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are conducting life-changing research that solves the problems of today. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. Hey, welcome to the Palmcast with Stephen Willis. We're going to start in a few minutes, but I want to tell you to hit up our social sites, retweet, share, comment, like, do all of that stuff. It can only help us out and it'll make the show even better. Um, but we're getting ready to give you a lot of good old Miss information and I just thought I would tell you that because the Palmcast is starting, well, it's starting right now. Wait, wait, no, that's a little early. It is starting right about now. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Palmcast. I am, of course, your host, Stephen Willis, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Um, before we get started, got a jam-packed show today. I want to tell you about Travel and Cruise World. 1-800-330-7461. That is 1-800-330-7461. What I was trying to do is give you a resource down here. Everybody needs a vacation. We're 18 months into this damn thing right now. So you can give them a call. They can get you the same rate you can get online. Plus, you have a resource down here for attractions, for business, for the beach. They can tell you what the different rules are around the places. They actually see it. They actually live it. So give them a call at 1-800-330-7461. That's TravelandCruiseWorld.com. See Central Florida like a local. Also, I want to tell you about BookAtailgate.com. BookAtailgate.com. It's a tailgating and events company in Oxford. Basically, they can handle all of your needs. If you want to have your tailgating stuff stored for your tailgate, they can do that. Need stuff rented, they can do that. You want an extra tent because more people are coming than you plan, they can do that as well. You need a TV, yep. And of course, they will pick up your catering as well. That is 1-800 or 662-701-1177. 662-701-1177. That's bookatailgate.com. Tell them we sent you. Thank you very much for that. And also, I want to tell you about La Terrain watches. They are affordable watches that you can get to at an inexpensive price. So if you look at it and decide to buy it, enter promo code POMCAST at checkoff check out for an automatic 10% off. Um, tell them we sent you and do all that stuff and tweet about it and all the good stuff as well. Um, we want to tell you, if you want to watch the show, you can catch us at the Stephen Willis or at Old Positively. You can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash palmcast. You can catch us on YouTube at Positively Old Miss. Hit subscribe, hit the bell. You'll know not only that we're streaming, you'll know what we're streaming about. And of course, you can catch us on Twitch at Positively Ole Miss, all one word, all lowercase. Um, the podcast, you can see down below where we're located. And um, let's see, is that it? Two, two and a half minutes. I went through that in record time. I'm very proud of that. Um, also, sorry about no Best of the West last night. We had a key feature of my software that was not working. We got that fixed today. They're going to do it on Thursday. We're going to do a mashup of Best in the West and the preview for the Ole Miss Arkansas game. We're going to do a live stream for that. So it'll be Kevin, Jake, and then me um, talking all about um, the Best of the West. I'm pretty excited about that. Also, um, tonight, we are going to echo our first broadcast. We're really interested in seeing how this works. But it'll be available on the Believe in Georgia Dogs podcast channels as well. And if this works with the paired channels and everything, this could lead into a syndication type situation with different platforms of each school to make SEC After Dark just explode ratings wise. We're very impressed and we're eagerly looking to see what this looks like. But they're on the Believe in Georgia Dogs podcast tonight. As, long, as well as all the podcasts that you were seeing here because, you know, we're the main ones. So we're pretty fired up about that. Also, if you have a podcast out there and you want to do it, we, we can syndicate it now. We'll tell you how to do it. We can produce the whole thing. It's going to live on my channel as well as a fee for me doing it to begin with, but we can also put it on your channels as well. So that is pretty cool. So I'm pretty fired up 
about what's going on. Today's show, we are going to talk about how Ole Miss and Arkansas are really mirror images of each other. Even if the offense doesn't look exactly the same, it's basically the same offense. Um, and the defense is almost identical, so it, it's going to be like that Spider-Man meme of pointing um, at the other one. That That's exactly how this game is probably going to look. Um, and the defenses are going to do really well against the offense in this game. Arkansas has a good game. Like, Kendall Bryles last year helped the defense to get ready for Matt Corral. Last year was one of our defense's best performance against Arkansas. So, um, Jeff Levy helped the defense out as well. So, now that both of them are doing the drop eight and it's going to be a run game, I'm interested to see exactly what it'll look like. I'm also interested to see, um, since Henry Paris Jr. got the majority of the snaps against Alabama, is he kind of drifting towards number one? It's interesting to see. If, if he becomes the RB1, he's got the package. He looks really good running the football. I'm, I'm impressed by what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm just really interested in um, how this is going to play out four games into the season. Pretty fired up about it, actually. Um, let me get this over here. So, um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to um, have the pressure highlights that I have not uploaded yet. So, um, we might not have pressure highlights. Um, but I can talk to you for a second and hopefully I can get them in here now um, because you guys deserve them as much as anybody else so pretty fired up I'm doing them right now can't believe I didn't um, load those in Let's see 10-6 there we go delete that bring Good grief. All right. All right, so yeah, we'll have presser highlights because <laughs> I did remember to get them in there. Um, it might have happened during the show, and it might have happened um, a little bit late, but I got them in there. Um, that's Braylon Sanders, Lakey Henry, and Nick Broker um, telling about you know their time at Ole Miss and what's going on. Um and third of all, we'll kind of bring you guys into the echoing effect. And we'll tell you again how to watch on a streaming box. And this will help you moving forward. But the SEC After Dark um, echoing situation is a pretty big game changer. Like I said, our goal with this channel is not necessarily to... I'm not in this for ego. I'm not in this for money. I'm purely in this for content and to get this for people. And this will be a way that SEC After Dark's content and the previews can go out to different different um, different platforms. Biscuits and SEC's preview can go out to different platforms. This is a way we can do this. Now, we might set it up, and you'll see it on our YouTube channel as an event um, that you can tune into coming down the line, much of the way that if you look now, you'll see like the Talking Ball with Bill Flowers and things like that. Um, but we'll be able to pair those events and people will be able to carry those events across numerous channels. Um, I'm, I'm pretty curious to see how this plays out and I want to know what the max is going to be eventually that we can get to. So I'm pretty fired, fired up about that. But we'll talk about that in the second segment. But first of all, I want to talk about how these are mirror images. Now, I mean, the offenses of both teams are basically, they have elements and are largely similar to the Art Browse offense at Baylor. You got the Kendall Browse stuff, um, and you got the Le Jeff Lebby stuff. Now, we're not going to count the um, 10 or so plays that are Lane Kiffin specials a game. We're not, we're not counting those. We're just talking about the basic function of the offense, and these are identical. If Arkansas had a passing quarterback, we were what they would look like. If we had just a running quarterback, if John Rice was playing quarterback, Arkansas is how we would look. I mean, it's the same offense. It looks different, but they do the same things. They block things the same way. It's mainly zone concepts on the offensive line. There's a little bit of gap scheme in there. Um, you got big physical guys outside the numbers playing, and then you've got slot receivers and tight ends that are the focal point of the offense. On the defensive side of the ball, they both play that drop eight defense. Um, they 
literally do. I, I think his name, um, was it John Haycock or whatever at Iowa State, they both are doing some version of that. So 80% of that defense is going to look the same too. So there's a little bit of difference. There's going to be the 20% on the defense, and there's going to be the stuff that Elaine Kiffin's doing to the offense. But it's important for people to realize these are really mirror images of each other um, right now on the football field. And because of that, the defenses are going to play really well against the offense. Both the defensive coordinators are going to know what gives the offenses trouble. And they're going to do it. Both sides. Last year, like I said, DJ Durkin had his first decent game against Arkansas and Fayetteville. Um, I think Barry Odom is going to come out and have one of his better games. So we're looking at a game that people are going to try and put this in the 40s. Mainly because narratives are out of date. And not enough people follow football and all the narrative is that Ole Miss is struggling defensively. Um, so Ole Miss must be struggling defensively. And that's just not the case. So the keys to this game, and we'll get into this a little bit more as the week goes on, but the keys to this game will be um, to jump on Arkansas a little bit early. They play offense like we do, but... They don't have the short and intermediate passing game. It's going to be deep shots. I would not I would expect to see four verts thrown three or four times during the ball game. And me and Bill Flowers talked about this on Talking Ball, which you can catch tomorrow night. But I think we're going to take deep shots as well. There's, there's, there's the... Thought that this game, since it's drop eight and against drop eight, is going to be run versus run, but I don't think that'll necessarily be the case. I think that we're going to run to open up the pass. We're going to do it true traditional at this point. I think they are going to take shots to take shots. They're not very good in the short and intermediate game. They're okay in the deep game. So our defensive backs need to have their P's and Q's, you know, dot their I's, cross their T's, whatever you want to call it, they need to handle that as well. Because this is what Arkansas is going to do. But ideally, Arkansas is a tough team to come back against. Their defense is good. Um, they eat up the passing game. They're second in the nation right now against the pass. So if Arkansas gets the lead, they are tough to come back against. But if you get the lead, it is tough for them to come back against. They're real similar to, um, honestly, like a wishbone team back in the day. It, you need it to get the lead to feel safe against them because of everything they did. Getting the lead is tough, but if you can do that and let them play catch up and not front run, you're in really good shape. You can kind of dictate how the game is going to be played. And I do think there is some dictating that will happen um, if Ole Miss can dictate their will on how the game is going to be played, they're going to be in good shape. I think Ole Miss has the better team. I think Arkansas is increasingly thin. You saw that against Texas A&M. Um, when K.J. Jefferson and Traylon Burks got hurt, that looked like a completely different football team. That is their margin for error at this point. And you have a quarterback that is running a ton of QB powers right now running up the middle. He's a big kid, and I, I get it. But there's a chance to nick yourself and ding yourself. Malik Hornsby is a great player, but he's a one-dimensional player. He makes Arkansas even more one-dimensional. Great runner, but that's, at this point, all that he really is. Um, I like Traylon Smith in the backfield. I think he's um, he's got 60 or 70 carries at this point. So he's, you're going to get a steady, steady diet of him, so they need to be ready to stop the run. Now, in the drop eight, I can see the outside of the box safeties coming up a little bit, so it looks like a true three four um, in the box for us because Otis Reese and hopefully Jacob Springer, I hope he's healthy as well, can come back and um, provide that little boost. Now, remember when the defense looks completely different when Jake Springer plays. 
He's a true box player. He's an excellent blitzer. If he comes back this game, he is going to be a difference maker defensively for Ole Miss. You know about Otis Reese. You know about Chance Campbell. But Jake Springer also helps make this defense go. Now, it also helps in this game that in this drop eight defense, Matt Corral goes against it every day. During fall camp, that's all he saw was this drop eight. So, I don't think there's going to be a freak out factor. And also, um, Ole Miss fans need to sell out this game, be there, be early, be loud, because um, loudness actually affected Arkansas against Georgia. They, were, they got intimidated. They ended up with 120 yards of offense. And, you know, they did miss a field goal, but, I mean, they got completely shut down. So, know that this game and the crowd can have effect on Arkansas. That's happened. That's happened already. So, all right. We're going to do our press conference highlights. We're going to take a short break after that, and then we'll come back and talk about echoing a bit. So I um, want everybody to tune in, enjoy this, and we'll be back in a minute. Um, just, just take what they give us, you know. Uh, don't try to always make the big play. Uh, you know, if the stops are there, just hit the stops. Um, the run game is going to be there. So uh, we're just going to do whatever it takes to go 1-0 and this week. Uh, they're a really good football team. Uh, they had a real bad game, you know, the same as we did last week. But uh, they're going to come in and try to run the football. So we really have to stop the run. You know, they got a really good quarterback, so we got to stop him in the run, stop the pass. And um, I really think it's going to be a great game, honestly. Yeah, like you said, communications pre-snap has kind of been the main thing. And then some of the uh, stuff they threw at us, you know, in-game, we got to do a better job communicating with coach on the sideline about and with each other. So I think that's a big thing is not only, you know, communication while we're on the field, but off the field when we go to the sideline and communicating things and uh, just putting us in a better call. Um, you know, you get tired here and there, but uh... – in the end, you know, you just you want to be out there for your teammates and your brothers. You know, you're going to give it everything you got each and every play. Uh, he can hurt you with his arm, but he can really hurt you with his leg. So uh, we got to defend both, honestly. You know, we got to be tuned into the run because he, he had an extra hat, really. So um, we got to be just be keyed into the run, really. Yeah, I mean, they got, you know, like you said, Anderson's a really good player. You know, he's going to play football for a long time. And Arkansas is the same way. You know, uh, 55, you know, he's a really good player. Um, there's a lot of really good things. You know, he bends really well. So, uh, I mean, that's why you sign up to play in this league, though, to play great players and to test yourself every week. All right. Um, that's absolutely correct. That is um, Braylon Sanders, Lakey Henry, and Nick Broker tuning in and having a good time. I'm looking forward to this game. This is a lot going on. Um, also on our YouTube channel, all the press conferences with questions and everything are down there available to you. Tune in for that, and you can hear some of the leading questions that are asked from the media. Basically, the way the media is, they they come into the press conference with an idea for a story. So they'll look at um, something going on, like Nick Broker played every snap on offense. So it's obviously a depth issue on defense. They don't have understanding of how the offense works and why this is going on, they just assume it because they've been told several different ways the way this should look. They're like, the offensive line should be eight or nine deep across. They have that mindset in there, and because of that, they um, are spitting out narratives right now that may or may not be correct. So just be careful about that. Whenever you hear um, an answer on there, go back there and listen to the question because sometimes the question is like, twice as long as the answer and it's obviously a leading question tr designed to get the answer that they want so just be careful with that um and just a little game a little inside baseball with the media whenever you go into a press conference there's generally a question that you want to get answered because you need it for a story that you need to do and used to back in the day these press conferences were a week's worth of content for people people that um, covered Ole Miss with the Clarion Ledger and the commercial appeal back in the day, the Tupelo, the Daily Journal, um, they'd go in there and ask like three or four questions and everything because they had an idea from their assignment desk of which stories they needed to do this week. You know, you had a couple of notebooks, a feature and all this, and you needed a couple of quotes so that you could write those things. So it was all planned for the whole week. So that's not necessarily the case anymore because they've 
you know, shut off access a bit um, to what's going on because the media at this point is taking the phrase, if it bleeds, it leads into a whole new realm. And they start, whatever happens, there's only a binary thing. You're either great or you're terrible. There's no in between. There's no nuance. And it's the product of the journalism that is going on in, in America today. If you get beat 42 to 21 by Alabama, there's obviously several problems and everything's wrong with your team. Whenever 48 hours before the game, you were talking about how this team had no problems and everything was going on. It was either great or poor. So just remember that moving forward and just understand what they're doing and how they do it. If you have, if you have an understanding of why they're doing what they're doing, it's not so blatant. But I think sometimes people just assume um, altruistic intense intentions with the media when it comes to questions when in reality it's designed to reach an end, a stated goal um, ahead of time. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you about the echoing and everything that we have in store for you coming up in the next week. So I hope everybody sticks around. We'll see you in about a minute. All right, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Willis. I um, hope everybody's having a good time on this Wednesday night. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. We're going to do our first echoing. We're calling it echoing of SEC After Dark to allow other channels to get involved. It's, it's kind of our first syndication test of what we're going on. Like used to, whenever you get a syndication, the way you go, you would need like satellites and everything set up so you can send it from one place to another for them to do it. The way it's set up now, we could set it up. I could set it up today with somebody in Bangladesh and we could stream it both um, both ways um, and you can have it there. So I, I'm pretty fired up about that. Also, if you're listening um, overseas on military bases, let me know. If you want it, we, be, we would be able to... Um, we would be able to make it available for you guys in there. But with the internet, I mean, 11 years ago, I had an idea um, for a show of what I wanted to do. I used to um, edit the Rivals Minute um, in, in Nashville. And we'd take about a minute and talk about the stories of the day and everything's going on. It's basically, if you notice, it's kind of a precursor to this. But it was kind of stale to where you had to shoot it and then you had to edit it and then you had to upload. That was, that was the train. And it was like three or four people that were involved and that actually became the Yahoo Sports Minute. And um, Corey got involved because he did the Yahoo Sports Minute um, with Blair Johnson and um, Ashley Russell. And... As that went on and on and on, and sitting there, I, I decided, you know, it's like, hey, I want to, I want to do something like this for Ole Miss. I mean, this is really cool, but the technology just wasn't there. Now, when streaming came about, it was close, and everything, but there's an efficiency that has to be hit with this, these videos, and everything that's going on. Because if you don't have that efficiency, all of a sudden you're at one video a day because it takes so much effort to get everything done. But it, so it needed to be essentially um, able to mass produce things. Like um, a little bit of inside baseball for people that are interested. On Tuesdays, generally, um, I do the podcast at um, 10 Central. 
and I do SEC um, or Best of the West at 8.30 p.m., but I also record with Bill Flowers and set that stream up for Thursday, and I record with Biscuits and SEC and set that stream up for Friday. Now, Thursday and Friday, I'm not I'm not really doing things necessarily, but it looks like I am because I was able to schedule that even though it comes across like a live stream, live stream. So that allows everything to be set. You can set it up to where Monday is like this, Tuesday is like this, Wednesday is like this, Thursday is, like, you know, all the way through and develop your workload, but through efficiency, you're able to get everything done. And, this one, this channel, we were able to do that. Now, in the middle of us building this channel, they came up with this extra piece of technology because everything's always growing that will allow us to pair channels. So it's designed, um, like I said, a little inside baseball, it's designed for people that are like gamers. And... If you want to stream your game, but you want to pair it with the person you're playing against online to where two channels are streaming essentially the same game from different perspectives or something, or two people are playing uh, the same game and you, and you just want to see it in both places because two gamers are doing it, they want it to allow that to happen. Well, what we're trying to do is to use that technology to syndicate our broadcast throughout the SEC. We'll see if it'll be able to happen. We'll see if they'll be able to do it. Um, we'll see if there's a bug. And my, my whole opinion is, always try to break this. Find out what it's capable of. And we're hoping, like with tonight, with the Believe in Georgia Dogs hopping in on the syndication train, we can do that and we can bring in the Texas A&M, the Louisiana people. We have contacts in all those places. Um, with their channels, the Florida people, South Carolina people. And we can just go around the conference. Now, since we do no competition, we do not believe in competition because, honestly, we're not competing with anybody. We're not trying to put anybody out of business. We're not trying to do anything like that. We're just trying to make sure the right content goes up, right? So since we're doing that, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter who these other conferences work for. So it's going to be a first come first serve thing. And we're trying to increase the audience of SEC after dark and eventually biscuits and SEC. And that'll be an SEC um, show and an SEC preview with different people that are attached on all the network. We're not doing this for ego. We're not doing th this for anything like that, but we're, like I said, we're trying to get the content out and I'm trying to find people that are willing to put good content out. If, if you see people that are only writing stories because of the bottom line, that's not a person that's going to end up being on this channel. We need to find somebody that is genuinely putting the right stuff out. Somebody like David Waters um, down at Gators Breakdown. We don't play Florida very often, but he does a fantastic job. Um, the Hammer over at the Junction blog. We need to get him set up what he's doing. The folks down at um, One Team, One Podcast need to get them ready to go. And we can increase this audience um, by them restreaming the product through their social medias, which means the stream would appear on Believe's um, YouTube page, his Twitter page. Um, everything that he normally has it set up to stream to, you'll be able to do that. So I'm pretty fired up about this. Um, this is going to be something that can just blow out the numbers and provide um, a little bit of something extra um, for fans all across the league, whether positively Ole Miss or not. So I'm pretty fired up about what's going on. And like I said, we're going to test that tonight. Hopefully it goes well. I'm also going to pay off my bet tonight, um, me and Cassidy, Thomas bet on the Ole Miss Alabama game. So you will see me with Hounds 2 all around because it's time to pay the piper on that one. So we're going to do that for SEC After the Dark. We're going to give picks. 
I need to build that this afternoon. Um, also, I got to go get flooring, by the way, and load that for uh, my brother-in-law. I'm going to do that in probably 30 minutes or so. So um, I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, um, 10 a.m. Central. We'll be on SEC After Dark tonight at 8.30ish, um, 8.30, 8.45, somewhere in there. Um, tomorrow, we're going to do a mashup of Best in the West and the Ole Miss Arkansas preview live stream with Kevin Bohannon and Jake Thomas to where we're going to talk a little bit about previewing that particular ball game, plus some other stuff in the SEC West. We'll talk about that as well. And we'll have a podcast, obviously, that day at 11. Talking Ball with Bill Flowers will be at 6 Eastern on the YouTube channel. And Biscuits and SEC's SEC preview will be a Friday at 6 o'clock. Also Friday, I'm going to be at Hollywood Studios riding Rise of the Resistance. So bully for me. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And I hope everybody had a good time. And we're going to keep pushing this. We're going to find ways that we can keep pushing this. And we're hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So um, thank you very much. And, of course, hotty toddy.